It's a joy to stand up here before you and look out and see all your happy, sunshiny, smiley faces. If you don't have a smile on your face, please put one on. <laughs> We're real happy to have a visitor with us this morning. Uh, now, I am sorry, I cannot remember her last name, but her first name is Hannah. Hannah, we're real glad to have you with us today. And she will tell you that I can chew a string together, right, Hannah? You saw me do it. And uh, you might want to think about that for a moment. But we're real happy to have you all here this morning. I, I got a, for some reason I have to do this to get it off my mind. But I'm doing something this morning that I don't think I've ever done before. Now, it's been 60 years since I've entered the ministry, or more. I have preached, I don't know how many sermons. But this is the first time I'm not using a biblical basis for my sermon. Very first time. And I, I don't know whether it's an apology or an explanation or what. But you take it from there. But I think one of the things you will hear me say many, many times, especially this time of the year, that Thanksgiving happens to be my favorite holiday. Now, I've been accused when I say that because I like the food, though. No, my daughter's going to do a lot of the cooking this time, so I don't like the food. <laughs> Sorry, Ruth. <laughs> Sorry, Ruth. <laughs> but uh, it's not that. I, somebody else says it's because of the football games. Maybe the Christmas parade. Now, I'll tell you why I like Thanksgiving. Simply because of the fact that everything that I am as a Christian, everything that I am as an American, come together on one holiday. I want you to think about that. I am proud to be an American. I am proud to be a part of this great country. I'm even more proud to be a Christian. And I think a Christian can be thankful even in the midst of adversity for the things that God has given. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm going to ask you a question. I had, don't want a show of hands. I don't want anybody to participate unless they want to. If you want to, you can do what you want. I'm going to keep on talking. <clears throat> but how many of you have places in that you would like to go to visit? All your life that you've never been able to. I, I, I remember, well, my wife still lived. There, we've talked about many things. One of the things that we looked forward to was trying to take a week and go to Branson, Missouri. That's one of the things we look forward to. When Steve got back one time from seeing the Grand Canyon, he got our interest perked and we've talked about trying to find the time to go see the Grand Canyon. I've always wanted to go see Mount Rushmore. And one of the things that I long to do, and I, I said something to my kids one time about this, and they said they would too. I'd love to see the Pacific Ocean. The furthest west I've ever been was the eastern part of Oklahoma, where I went out to a church meeting on an Indian reservation. But ever since I can remember, there's been one place that I've been wanting to go. And even though I've had opportunity to do it, by the fact that I lived in a locale, I never was able to do it. And that place where I would like to go sometime to visit is Gettysburg. Now, I was born and raised in Pittsburgh, which was not too far from Gettysburg. I, I served a church in the northwestern Pennsylvania by Lake Erie, which again was not too far from Gettysburg. I served a church in northeastern Ohio, up around Youngstown which was not too far from Gettysburg. And even though, even though I've been close in the proximity of that particular locale, I never have taken the time to go. Several years ago, I had a friend, his name was Jim Sayre, who is an Abraham Lincoln lookalike. Uh, I used to love to go with them to restaurants when everybody would turn around and do a double take. And I would purposely, especially when I was at the salad bar or the buffet, I would walk up to somebody and say, hey, look at that guy over there. Doesn't he look like Abraham Lincoln? Mm -hmm. Just do that for the devilment of it. I've lost contact with him. I would like to renew it because he has entered Abraham Lincoln look-alike contest and has won almost every one of them. 
because of his looks. Uh, he says, thanks to a fake mole on his face that he puts on, uh, hair dye, and elevated shoes, he can <laughs> look pretty much like him. But I sat down with him one time and I talked about Gettysburg. He says he's been there many times because of his looks. And the reason I'm bringing this out, I, I don't know how many of you happen to realize that this coming Tuesday is a anniversary of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. 150 years ago, Lincoln stood up in the fields of Gettysburg where they were consecrating the ground for the burial of those that lost their lives in that great battle and gave one of the greatest speeches I think men ever gave, his Gettysburg Address. This past week I was surfing the internet. Actually I was looking at sermons trying to find some idea as to how I wanted to approach Thanksgiving this year that would be different. And I came across this idea of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. All over our country, cities are preparing celebrations or remembrances of that great day when he offered that Gettysburg Address. Murfreesboro, Kentucky, is planning an all-day celebration. Gettysburg itself is planning a celebration. 150 years. And the more I thought about that this past week, the more I thought that we need to look at that and to realize the greatness of our nation and the many struggles that we have gone through. I think of three holidays that we have in celebration last week, last Monday was Veterans Day. And as I said last Sunday morning, I appreciate everything our veterans have done. We have this coming Tuesday, the celebration of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Then we have Thanksgiving coming up. If we put all of them together, we come up with a great idea as to what we Americans are. When I read Gettysburg Address, there were three things that I picked out of there that I thought a Christian, a Christian American ought to be very much aware of. <clears throat> I'm going to read it right now. Those of you that picked up the bulletins, it's in the bulletins, the very first thing. I wish I had Jim Sayre here to give it because he can read the Gettysburg, cite the Gettysburg Address and will bring tears to your eyes. I think my kids who may have heard him do that will agree with me on that. Listen to what Lincoln said. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created evil. Are evil, equal. I told Ruth I was going to do that. <laughs> all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are, met, we are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives that our nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work that they fought, that they fought here, have thus far so nobly, nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be, to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, 
that from those honored dead we could increase devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we have highly resolved that those that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. Not that, get the, not that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Now I know I did not do a good job of reading that. Every time I read it, I get choked up because I recognize a lot of things that he said there. But as I looked at this, there are three things that I think are highly important. 